Hi, my name is Sudarshan. Welcome to my channel EasyML. We will now move on to the second branch of supervised learning, which is classification models. Remember this sample data from the introductory video? For those of you who need a refresher, click on the link provided below. We will now have a quick recap on classification models. Recall that when we predict a categorical variable using numeric variables as predictors, then it becomes an example of a classification model. Let us now draw a use case of classification models from this sample data right here. If I build a model to predict gender using variables such as height and weight, then that is an example of a classification model. Therefore, gender becomes my predicted variable and variables such as height and weight become my predictors. Recall, in the introductory videos, I had also mentioned that within classification models, we will only be specifically focusing on the random forest model. In this video, we will venture into those concepts that are a prerequisite to the random forest classification model. Well, before understanding the random forest model, we must first try and understand the decision tree model, as the random forest model is just a more advanced or we can say an evolved form of the decision tree model. Now, from the sample data we just saw a few seconds back, we know that our predicted variable is gender and my predictors are height and weight respectively. Also note that I have 13 observations here. I will now plot these 13 observations according to their gender across height and weight. That is height on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis. Now after having plotted these gender observations, we will try and group these observations into homogeneous groups because that is the rationale behind decision tree models. So here on the graph, we need to divide these observations into homogeneous groups. So how can we do that? We will first try and identify values for height and weight such that these observations are classified into distinct groups. So for what values of height and weight can I observe groupings? When the value of height is equal to 161 centimeters and the value of weight is equal to 58 kgs, we can observe that there are three distinct groupings of these gender observations. These groupings, you can say, lie in various regions. Here, in regions 1, 2 and 3, we now have homogeneous gender observations grouped together. Now, before we move on to the decision tree model, please understand that the height, which is equal to 161 centimeters, and weight, which is equal to 58 kgs, are my threshold values. Now, let us say we have an observation where the height is 158 centimeters and the weight is 55 kgs. And I want to predict the gender for this particular observation. We will now see how the decision tree model helps predict gender for this particular observation. I now call upon the first threshold value that is height. I ask the question that is the height of this observation less than 161 centimeters which is my threshold value. The answer is going to be either a yes or a no. Since this observation has a height of 158 centimeters and 158 centimeters is obviously less than the threshold value 161 centimeters, the answer in this case is yes. Now from the graph on the left, we can observe that below the threshold value of height 161 centimeters, there are six observations, but from both male and female, from both genders, if you see. Now note that I need to only predict one gender value, right? Since I cannot arrive at a decisive outcome, I now call upon the second threshold value, which is weight. Here, I again ask another question. That is the weight of the given observation less than 58 kgs. 
the answer again is either a yes or a no. In this case, the answer is a yes again because this observation has a weight of 55 kgs and 55 kgs is obviously lower than the threshold value 58 kgs. Hence, this points to the observations in region 1. We now look at the majority of the gender observations that lie in this particular region. Here, we observe that all the observations that lie in region 1 belong to the female gender. Hence, given the height of 158 centimeters and weight of 55 kgs, we predict the gender to be female. If the height and weight values had been different, then it would have pointed to the observations that lie in the other, the other regions, that is regions 2 and 3, where the gender predicted would have then been male. Well, this is briefly how the decision tree algorithm works. In the next video, we will take a look at under what circumstances does the nature of the decision tree change. Thank you. Stay tuned.